Okay guys, today we're going to make a pot holder, which would be a great gift for someone for Christmas or a birthday or some other holiday. First thing we're going to do is make a square out of a piece of paper so that we'll have a pattern for our fabric. So I'm going to cut this to be about six and a half inches. And you can make your pot holder any size you want. I'm going to try this size first and see if that's a good size for a pot holder. All right, so I've got my pot holder shape now. I'm going to pick some fabric. I'm going to go for, I've got this pretty bird fabric that looks like it would be great for making a pot holder. So I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to pin it. All right. And I'm just going to take my scissors and cut it out. Okay, I'm actually going to cut two of these um, so that I'll have a front and the back. There's one part. Okay, there's my two sides of my pot holder. Put this pin back. Now, you don't want to just use two pieces of fabric for a pot holder because they're not thick enough to uh, keep your hands from getting burned by the heat of the stove. So what do you think we need in the middle? Well, there's several things you can use to insulate or protect your hands from the heat. You can use several layers of felt, like we could put two or three layers together there. You can use batting, which is this uh, flat cotton stuffy stuff that you put in between quilts. And I would still do several layers of that. You can buy this special batting. It's called Insul Bright. And it, I don't know if you can see, but it has a little bit of uh, protective metal in there that insulates against the heat when you're using the pot holder. And even with this, I would do a couple of layers because things in the oven and on the stove can get pretty hot. And then, of course, the last thing you could use is some stuffing. All right, I'm going to make it with some of the Insul Bright. And I'm also going to put a square of regular batting just to give it some extra insulation. So this will be too thick right there so that we've got a little bit of protection. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller than the actual pot holder. So I'm going to mark where the pot holder is just to get an idea. Okay, I just used a Sharpie for that. Now I want it smaller so that it's going to fit on the inside. So after I've marked it, I'm just going to come in here and cut it about half an inch smaller. See what I'm doing right there? All right, let's do that. All right, I've got my insulation cut. I'm going to make sure it is smaller than my outsides. I think it's a little too close to the edge. So let's get those scissors back. And I'm going to take just a little bit more off. On both sides. Let's see how that works. That's pretty good. Okay. Now we're going to pin this together. And then what you want to do is we're going to sew it. You can sew it different ways. Um, the easiest is going to be the sewing machine. 
So in just a minute, we'll take it over to the sewing machine and do that. But you can also do it with a needle and thread. You'll just need to make sure you've got a good needle and some thread. And what you're going to do is sew an X on here so that your insulation stays attached to the outside of your pot holder. Before we go over and sew our pin cushion together, we're going to need to make a little loop to put so that our uh, pot holder will hang up either in the kitchen or wherever uh, inside a cabinet or on the outside of the cabinet. So I'm just going to take some felt so that I don't have to sew the edges. And then when I'm ready to sew my pot holder together, I'll include that loop so it'll hang up for us. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put our fabric under the needle and we're going to make an X. So I'm going to sew across this way. You can go slower if you want to. You're going to control it with the pedal that's on the floor. All right, I got to the end there. I'm going to roll my needle up. I'm going to pull this out, make sure it's nice and long, cut it. Then we're going to go the other direction. All right, we have a nice X sewed on there. I cut my thread. Okay, so we've got this sewn together so that the batting is connected to the outside. And we're gonna take our other piece of fabric and we're gonna put it like this. So this is the inside of the fabric. The wrong side is another way people say that. We're gonna put the wrong side on top of this one and the right sides will be facing each other see that there we go so i'm going to take a pin and i'm going to pin this it's a little thick now which is what you want all right we're getting ready to sew again and you need to make sure that when you sew these edges together don't catch this batting in it we want that to be separate and to not be attached. Now, so I'm going to take these. Um, if it's easier, and I think it might be in this case, I'm going to take another pin and I'm going to pin it together. All right, so I'm going to take another pin, scoot that out of the way, and pin together. See there? All right, so I'm going to put that under. And then I'm going to put the foot down and I'm going to sew these edges together without getting this batting in. So here we go. Take that pin out. And we go around the edge. And it doesn't matter if they totally match. You just want to make sure that you're including both edges. All right, so I'm getting to the end and I'm turning the corner. Put it back down. You can't sew without the foot down or it'll tangle up your needle. I mean your thread. Here we go around this side. We're making sure we're not getting that batting in there. Get to the corner again. We're going to turn it. Make sure it's all matching up. Mine's getting a little tangled, so I'm going to cut it right here. Now, as we get to this last side, we're going to make sure we leave a hole, some place that we don't sew, so that we can turn it inside out. down. Okay, here we are at the corner. We're going to do that last side. Don't forget, we've got to leave a gap so that we can turn it inside out. So I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to bring the fabric out. I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to leave a gap. See, here's my the end of that right there where I stopped. I'm going to start again right here. 
and go all the way to the end. All right, there we go, I'm cutting it again. All right, so we've got it sewed together, all the sides. We were careful not to catch the batting. See that? And we left a hole on the side right here. So we're gonna turn it, oh, take the pin out first. Then we're gonna turn it right side out. And then I can't quite reach the other side. So I'm gonna grab a pencil. I'm gonna use the eraser side. Till I get as flat as I want it. Okay, so there we have, it's turned the right way. You can see the X on that side where we attached the interfacing or the batting in the middle. All right, so we have a hole. And we're gonna need to show, sew that shut. We're gonna sew the hole closed. All right, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go all the way around the edge and put a line around the outside so that um, it matches from where I close it up. Now, you can also close this by just taking your needle and doing a whip stitch. Okay, there we go. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna go all the way around the edges. See that? Turn it. There, got you a better view. We're gonna go around this side. Now, you can also do something a little bit fun here. You can go back over. See how we did that X on this side? We can go back over to the other side and do any kind of design we want. All right, so I'm gonna just do a wiggly design. See how I'm just kind of moving it around as it goes? making a wiggle. Oh, I'm going to come back around. I'll make a wiggle here. Make a wiggle. Just move it all over the place. This is called quilting. And it just basically attaches the layers together. And you can have lots of fun with this. You don't even have to get close to the needle. And you just go round and round until you get what you want, where you want. We got to the end here, and I almost forgot to include our little loop. So I'm going to take it and just put it right here in the corner. You may want to pin it, but you don't have to. I'm going to sew over it. Now I'm gonna do that a couple of times because I don't want it to come off when we've got it hanging up in the kitchen. So basically, you see I'm keeping my needle down. I'm turning, putting the foot up, turning it around, and going back over it. Okay, we are finished. So we got our cute little pattern that we quilted on here. We do have some loose threads that I need to cut. We don't want those getting caught in anything. Let's see. There we go. All right, so you can see our pattern that we quilted. See on both sides. Here's our hook to hang it up with. Look, we did it. You made your pot holder all by yourself to give as a gift 
or to hang on and use yourself. Um, if you need help from anybody, that's totally fine. You can have your parents join you or an older sister or brother. But look, we did it. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.